We are here in Madrid, Spain, for the Ericsson OSS BSS Summit 2023, hosted by Telefonica. And we are learning a lot, and we learn a lot of all the presentations that we had today, in particular with Shashmit, with you. So before we got, get into the topic, uh, tell us about yourself. Yeah, uh, first, it's great to be here, you know, uh, another OSS BSS Summit, and I think uh, this is my fourth one, you know, attending OSS BSS Summit. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been with Ericsson from my career perspective for almost two decades now, uh, wow. moving around in, in different regions. Uh, but the last eight years, uh, I would say I'm based now in Stockholm, Sweden, leading this group called Ericsson Consumer Lab, which is the, the insight and the foresight unit uh, within Ericsson Research. And, and basically, the, the idea with setting up this unit is to get in the, the voice of the consumers into the organization. And, and what we're doing is really a lot of research, uh, spending time uh, going out and speaking with consumers, trying to really figure out what are the most important trends that are really impacting our industry as far as ICT is concerned, and then bringing all that knowledge in-house in order to advise our customers on how to stay ahead of the market. Uh, and mm -hmm. 5G, of course, is one important area that we've been tracking for the past, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, since the launch in 2019. And, and mm -hmm. we have massive amounts of data uh, available with us, and we want to share that knowledge. That's awesome, because that is what we, we want to learn about how 5G is shaping the demand to differentiated quality of service and, and how these uh, trends are affecting the industry or... What are the big uh, challenges that we have ahead? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we have now launched our uh, brand new Consumer Lab report that was launched on uh, 3rd of October. And, mm -hmm. and basically, the report kind of mm -hmm. details some key trends that we see manifesting in the sector right now. Okay. And one of the most important trends that we see is this demand for what we call differentiated quality of service. And it's basically stemming from the fact that we see that the more experienced 5G users, you know, users who've mm -hmm. been on the network for, let's say, over a year, are expressing some sort of dissatisfaction with application experience uh, metrics. So it's not mm -hmm. so much coverage or speed, because we have already built that out now. Mm -hmm. But it's more that these guys are early adopters, they carry premium devices. Uh, so for them, what matters is, for example, uh, the video conferencing uh, quality or, or video streaming quality uh, in a way. And, and that's where metrics like uplink or upload speeds become much more important than, than the downlink sort of speeds. So we see that there is a market uh, for consumers, you know, almost about 20% of consumers globally indicating that they want 5G to move from best effort to more differentiated quality of service. Mm -hmm. And we see that they are willing to pay at least 11% more Mm -hmm. uh, to get this differentiated quality of experience. So this is a massive opportunity uh, for service providers to think about uh, evolving their 5G monetization strategy uh, from where they are right now, which is much more uh, volume-centric, data-centric, buckets, uh, maybe speed tiering, to more differentiated quality of service in the long run. So th that's, that looks amazing because maybe when we started with 5G and talking about 5G, we were saying, okay, we needed to capture attention in the industry. But now, it was getting more familiar with, and the industry more familiar with 5G adoption, the expectations are higher also. And you mentioned the example, video conference, the quality, speed. And so all this is on the report. Let's talk about the report. Well, but first, before we talk about the report, is, this report is available to everybody? Yes, absolutely. So... This report is available uh, on ericsson.com and it can be downloaded. The title of the report is 5G uh, Value, Turning Quality into Loyalty. And, uh, you know, we when we launched this report, as with all Consumer Lab reports, uh, this is available in the public domain because, as I said, uh, mm -hmm. we've been capturing this data for the past five years now. Okay. And every time we go out and we try to kind of stitch an important narrative, and this time... The narrative is much more about the importance of this differentiated quality of service. And how this is, uh, what's the difference in different regions of country when they ask about the quality of the expectations that you mentioned? Because yeah. they have different levels, levels of maturity, I would say. So yeah. how does this work? I mean, yeah. that's a very good question. I and mean, I think, uh, what we see is, is of course, regional variations depending mm -hmm. upon, uh, where the market is as far as 5G maturity is concerned. So if you look at, mm -hmm. 
uh, extremely advanced markets uh, from a maturity perspective like South Korea, US, uh, mm-hmm. Taiwan, Australia that have been so-called early adopter 5G markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, we clearly see that there is a there is a big shift now towards differentiated quality of service. However, when we come to more high growth markets, let's say India, for example, which has launched 5G a, a year back, mm-hmm. uh, some other uh, emerging markets like Indonesia, Malaysia, and so forth, there is still a lot of emphasis that consumers are putting on innovative applications and services, right? So they would like to see uh, 5G propositions and, and plans build around those applications and services. Mm-hmm. And then the, the service providers can think about how can we really differentiate the application experience. So that differentiated connectivity could come in as an additional add-on on those innovative sort of 5G applications. And so, But clearly we, we see a, a huge di- regional di- uh, variations in terms of different markets and where they are. And for that, there are, it's a special, I mean, er, from an Ericsson standpoint, uh, different strategy, right? I mean, different adapt, uh, an adapting strategy to, to each of, of the regions. But where well, you will say that comes the, the quick uh, uh, adoption of uh, 5G and the differentiation that you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, from, from our analysis, we already see that there are, when we did an analysis looking at about, uh, you know, 30 odd markets and analyzing 100 operators across the globe, we see that some of the front runner operators, roughly around 13% of these operators have already started to implement these differentiated quality of service propositions. So as we speak, you know, this is already happening in the market mm-hmm. and this is coming on the back end of uh, capabilities like 5G standalone, uh, you know, slicing, uh, traffic prioritization, but also the capabilities that need to be there is, of course, a very advanced monetization engine, you know, mm-hmm. the, the billing systems, the exposure functions and so forth. So th- what we're seeing is that service providers or front runners who have these capabilities, who have the most advanced monetization engines, real time charging capabilities, and of course, on the network side, 5G standalone are, are in a much better position to go ahead and launch some of these propositions in the market. So they definitely have a first mover advantage uh, with with what is happening in the market right now. And, and we expect that this momentum is going to go forward in the coming years as well. I mean, there is a lot to speak. I mean, a, a lot of value uh, downloading the report. I think uh, we can talk more of that in the, in the near future. But the good thing is that the report is available for everyone and we can interact on, on the audience can interact also with you. We have solved, you're very active in LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, and so that, that is awesome. And, and your name stuck on this poll. So, so uh, definitely we can learn more, but uh, we are very grateful for the, your time and for your insights awesome. here in this summit. And we're looking forward to continue our conversation. Of course. Thanks. Thanks My pleasure. Yeah.